Film City alias Bollywood, capital of the world's largest film industry. Every year, India produces more than 700 feature films. Thousands of actors and actresses do find employment here. But many more hopefuls never get beyond these gates. Every day, some 200 would-be stars are lured to Mumbai by the glamour of Bollywood. They come from all over the world, including Britain. People working in the films, they use this phrase called the struggling period. I didn't go through that, thank God. Being an actress was always in the back of my mind. It was just a little thing that I always wanted to do. You don't fail just because you didn't sleep with someone. I think actually that's probably, you probably fail more if you do sleep with someone and get the role. If they look at the star, stardom, then the struggle will be immense for them. If your film succeeds, you, you have a longer life. East looks at the British would-be Bollywood stars. We discover the trials and tribulations on the road to success and the heartbreak of failure. East reports from India and Britain. This is the story of three British Asian girls obsessed with stardom in Mumbai. Salma Aga was brought up in London and came to Mumbai determined to make it in Bollywood. But her conservative Muslim family were not amused. Everybody suddenly got a shock, you know, a girl of our family going into films and all that. And they didn't like it. I think they eventually uh, became used to the idea that I just won't stop. <laughs> How did you get into your first film, The Car? I met Mr. B.R. Chopra. And uh, he said, you know, he asked me, would I be interested in working in a film? And I said, no. I'm interested in music and I'd just like to sing a song. And here I saw, okay, it's a major break in a film, but then I'll be singing all the songs picturized on myself. And it so happened it turned out to be a very big hit. Here in Britain, there's a growing market for Bollywood films. They're now attracting a mainstream as well as an Asian audience. Recently, the film Dilsi, produced in Mumbai, made it into the top ten along with Hollywood blockbusters. I couldn't be more surprised, especially with the success of Dilsi, which accounts for, I'd say, 60 to 65 percent of our revenue at the moment. It seems like these which make British Asians dream of stardom. Academics are becoming increasingly interested in the Hindi film phenomena and the lure of Bollywood. They're studying the influence of these films on British Asians. It's very deep. Um, I, I think for the first generation migrants in the late 60s and 70s, uh, a lot of it had to do with the nostalgia factor. and. Um, Parents, if, if, if you have families where the parents are constantly viewing these sort of films all the time, then the girls, or, or, or okay, let's say the children here, they grow up with these icons. They grow up with this whole romanticizing and uh, the glamour aspects of what they call Bollywood cinema. And that could in many ways be the motivation to, to aspire to be a star in the Bombay film industry. Aspirations to star in Bollywood were heightened when one of the biggest stars, Vinod Khanna, came to London to audition for his film Himalaya Putra. Hundreds of girls applied to feature alongside his son Akshay. The character of the girl in the film requires her to be a girl from the West who has never been to India. So in spite of having shortlisted girls in India, uh, I still feel that if you get a girl from this part of the world, It'll make the film uh, a real interesting. Four girls were selected, two dropped out. 
Angela Zaveri, 17, from Portsmouth, and Shazia Malik, 16, from Pinna, took the plunge. And then I made him a small video with me doing a dance. And um, I just, you know, different poses, different photographs. And before I knew it, my whole life would change. I was given a week to decide whether I wanted to go or if I wanted to stay. And at that point, I had just finished my GCSEs. So it was kind of, if I was to take a break, it, that was the time to do it. The two British Asian girls found filmmaking is big business in India. The industry employs a million people. Its annual turnover is the equivalent of $693 million. It pays the government $100 million in taxes. Himalaya Putra was well publicized. The music was released with the usual razzmatazz. But sadly, the film flopped. OK, the movie flopped. You can't really blame anybody. I mean, everyone put their hard work into the movie. Um, the fate of a film can never be judged while you're making the film. Everyone obviously feels that they're making a very good film. The producer was able to insist on tough conditions because the two girls were newcomers. We weren't allowed to sign films for about two years until the film was completed, but it might have been an advantage to have a few more films lined up before the release of the first one. It may be a tough world, but the dream of seeing your face up there is enough to lure thousands of would-be actors to Mumbai. Even those who do get anywhere are likely to have short careers because 85% of Bollywood movies flop at the box office. So what makes a film and what breaks a film? I wish I knew. I'm sure the producers wish they knew. Nobody really knows what it is, except that the audience has become so smart today that they just have to hear a film. They know everything about a film. They are far, more, they're far smarter than any journalist or any producer is. They know that this film is not going to do well. They don't go into the theatre. Would a producer then be very unlikely to give an unknown heroic role? Uh, yes, in today's times, uh, yes, because the stakes are so big. The amount that a film is sold for is uh, so massive. Recovering the money becomes very difficult. Because when you have a star, you have the initial audience that goes in. You sell your film in overseas. There is a certain, there is a certain captive audience that will come in to see their film. With a newcomer, that is obviously not there. Party going is essential if a newcomer is to have any hope of becoming a star. Everybody in the industry gets together at these sorts of functions, and I am part of the industry, so to indifferent myself from that would be a bit odd. So, yes, I do go along to these parties. But what about uh, drugs, drinking and sex at these parties? Is there a lot of that? Um, if there is, it's, it's really on the down low. You're not supposed to do it. Like, a girl's not supposed to go out every night, and she's not supposed to get drunk if she, you know, she's supposed to be a heroine. You know, she's not supposed to have lots of boyfriends and go out dancing every night. She's supposed to be, like, prim, proper, and you know, a traditional Indian girl, basically. The oriental splendor of Mumbai's Victorian terminus, a cathedral of the railway age. But for many of those blinded by the bright lights of the film industry, the gateway to tragedy. Success stories of stars who started from nothing also lure hundreds of Indians to Mumbai. Innocent, inexperienced and impressionable, they all too easily fall into bad company. Alka Pandey, a social worker, tries to protect young girls who come to Mumbai in search of stardom. As soon as you arrive at the station, people are aware that you're new to Mumbai. They manage to sweet talk girls. Some even sell them to brothels. They never get to enter the film industry. This is the reality. Prospective stars, or strugglers as they're known, have to find accommodation in a city of sky-high property prices. The best most can hope for is a room shared with eight or ten others in one of Mumbai's sprawling slums. The main problem that they face the first time is to enter any place, uh, whether it is a studio or a producer's office. If you walk in, uh, there is no chance of getting in. If you go in a taxi, there is some chance. And if you are a little uh, moneyed man, you hire a private car, then it becomes easier. First question is, why have you come here? 
If you have come to become a star, you forget it. No struggler gets anywhere without posing for a portfolio. The minimum cost is £70, a big sum in India. For many, it's money down the drain. There are no hopers. Lots of them, actually, you know, I, because there are lots of people who have collected money down the years, you know, and uh, lots of people who cannot afford portfolios and get into this. So I try and advise some, you know, who I feel have no potential. What percentage of your portfolios who actually make it in the film industry? Very few, actually. Uh, these newcomers have an impression that, you know, Dabu makes one, this one look good, makes that one look good. So I get lots of probably the people, the worst of the lot, probably, you know. And they want to come and look like stars and they want to wear clothes like stars. And, and even you can't make them into a star. I mean, I, I kind of do my best to make them look good, but then the producers get upset with me, say that you make them look good in pictures and personally they are terrible. <laughs> so I'm getting that reputation. <laughs> Gaurav Guy from Delhi believes he can become a hero. He's totally inexperienced, but he won't accept a lesser role. How long are you prepared to struggle to try and find a role? Uh, I came with the intention of becoming a hero, and I will become a hero. Whether it takes me five years, ten years, or fifteen years, I don't care. Your mother has come to Bombay with you. Yes, my mum is with me so that I don't have to worry about food or anything. She is here to look after me. What does your father think there, that your mother is down here looking after you? What about him, poor chap? My father sent my mum with me to make sure I am looked after. When he misses us, he comes to see us. When we miss him, we visit him. One of Mumbai's best-known directors finds a struggler from Agra has managed to get into his office. But it doesn't do her any good. I just come to uh, meet you and show my photographs. I do get disappointed. I really get depressed and uh, it puts me off. But that's how it works. That's how it works. When you see a newcomer walk on uh, into your office or you meet a newcomer in some party or some... Uh, you see that there is a fragrance, that is, uh, that, 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 you know, what is charisma? You can never really define it. What is it? There's a perfume that emanates. You have this, uh, the chemistry, uh, which sends uh, signals to you that here is that individual who has the possibilities of becoming a star. Munish Goel thought he'd got it made when he won a talent competition and came to the notice of producers. So if you signed for these four A-grade movies, why are you still struggling? And 96 was a year when uh, our industry saw a crunch of money and newcomers' movies getting flopped miserably. So my, this, my producers had a pressure from the distributors not to start the movie with any new guy. So I, I got sacrificed in, in the bargain. You yourself, as a director, must be pestered by people wanting to get into the films, haven't you? Well, uh, that is an understatement. I would say that uh, I've had uh, my phones ringing. Uh, nowadays, even more because you have people from uh, the West calling you. And they say, you know, I'm calling from London. So I said so. Or I'm calling from New York. So I said so. And I need a break. And so they're highly presumptuous, these lads and these, uh, these girls who call from there. Uh, but they uh, have a mindset which is not different from a struggler who comes from the Punjab or from Haryana or from Bihar. So how big is the struggle for, to get into the movies? I mean, how many people, for instance, have you any idea of milling around the place trying to get into the movies? Thousands of them are. I know of people who have been struggling for, let's say, 25 years. I have had people standing outside my office following me. I got the feeling I'm Pipe Piper, and they're all following me. And at times I had to use the police to get rid of them because they get violent, they get difficult. Uh, very few of them settle down to become junior artists, like extras, what you call here, because their vanity interferes. So I believe these individuals who come here and put up with this live in abject poverty and keep on hoping. They live in hope and they die in hope. These caves were home for three of today's biggest names in Bollywood when they were strugglers. 
the producer Subhash Gai, the actor Danny, whose present bungalow is a tourist attraction, and the scriptwriter Javed Akhtar. This was a popular place for strugglers because there were at least eight large studios nearby. These caves also saw the death of many dreams. They saw real, real deaths of the people who couldn't take the struggle, who couldn't make it, really make it, and couldn't take the struggle. They, could, they couldn't go out, they didn't have the money to live, and whatever little money they had, they used to spend on drinking the local liquor. So most of them died here. The most successful of all Bollywood heroes, Amita Bachchan, was once a struggler, sleeping rough on the sea front. He was unsuccessful in a talent competition. Unfortunately, I was rejected in the preliminaries and uh, uh, came back very saddened and frustrated. Um, gave up my job, uh, just landed up in Bombay with my driving license, determined to become an actor. Well, I thought if I didn't an become an actor that I'd be a taxi driver at least. <laughs> and uh, just went from door to door, really, with my photographs and uh, my credentials. I, I, I always consider him as one of the greatest strugglers. I have seen his struggle from that time when he used to uh, be nowhere, when he used to be pushed out of offices, literally, literally pushed out of offices and told by directors to go and try some other job. Another long-lasting star, Sunil Dutt, once slept on the pavements and studied by the light of street lamps. I worked in a bus depot, and when these bus, uh, these, uh, bus conductors, the bus drivers used to come, they used to report to me that uh, the, the mud guard damaged, the, the bell is not working properly, and uh, so much diesel is required. So all this recorder used to keep it. They used to call it shop recorder. So this was a struggle that kept on, but I never, you know, I, sometimes people lose heart. But I feel that this uh, struggle makes you more determined if you face, face it, and much stronger. Competition for strugglers is made even more fierce by the advantage a star's son, like Sanjay Dutt, enjoys. Yeah, it is a great help, like I said. I mean, like uh, launching and somebody connected with the industry, your father or your uncle or something, helps you a lot. But I mean, eventually, then uh, you have to stand on your own. Is that one film? Then after that, you know, you're alone. You have to prove yourself. Against all the odds, British Asian Salma Aga's successful career continues. She's appeared in 20 films, cut 15 albums, and won a shelf full of awards. My first award was the biggest award in India, which is the film fair. I was nominated as a singer and as an actress both. And then Pati Patni and the wife. That was, that was given two awards in Russia. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend it. I was shooting somewhere else. But British Asian Angela Zaveri is still not established. Her second film also flopped. Luckily, it didn't have so much of an effect on me. You cannot blame an artist for a film being a flop. So it can, in a way, um, affect the films that they will get in the future, or the way they're portrayed. British Asian Shazia Malik only managed two roles as a vamp, which she claims is not a disadvantage for a would-be heroine. Um, no, not really. I mean, we've seen so many artists that have come in and out of different kind of roles. I mean, we've had people that have played villains, and they've played comedians, and then they've played heroes. And so, you know, anything's possible. I don't think you really do get that typecast. So I don't really see it to be that much of a problem. The action-packed martial arts film Master will introduce two new British Asians to Bollywood. So, Khalid, how does a Glaswegian like you happen to find yourself on this film set in Bombay? Um, I suppose it's just a bit of bad luck. <laughs> bad luck, you'd say, would you? <laughs> well, one thing that um, working in the industry Everybody's always on about this thing called luck, luck, luck. It's not how talented you are, it's not how you portray yourself, it's being in the right place, doing the right thing and being spotted by the right person. And the reason why I can say, in a way, bad luck is because I've had to pull myself away from my life and come and do something which is totally alien to myself. So this is like a dream come true, you know, it's just, I got picked out and thrown at the film industry, so I did not have to struggle. Merseysider Vijay Kumar has struggled to get just a minor role. Just over 10 years, uh, 
I started all watching a film in the theater where I felt that uh, all these uh, people sitting in the theater watching the big screen, uh, the people on the big screen, why can't I be on the big screen? So that's where it started and I said, let's go to Bombay and try my luck in films. Yorkshire-born Helen Brodie was noticed by a director after winning a modeling contest in London. It happened all sudden, because I met him on the Monday. Uh, I think he left for India that night. He called me up on the Wednesday and said, the role was yours if you want it, and I want you in Goa by Saturday. Do you find the totally different attitude towards uh, erotic scenes and things in India to, to in Britain? Oh, absolutely. I think what it is is they just can't handle their women doing any kind of uh, sexy scene on, on screen. Uh, but when I talk about sex scene, I mean any kind of nudity on screen. But yet, you know, if you watch the dances in the Hindi movies or, you know, any other particular scene, they, they can be pretty, uh, you know, pretty sexy, but, you know, with their clothes on. It's sort of soft sex in a way, is it? <laughs> yeah, soft sex. <laughs> Violence has always been part of Indian movies, but sex was taboo. Even kissing was off limits. Now, no Bombay movie is complete without passionate embraces, erotic dances and see-through saris. And sex is selling. We're going to step up um, the levels of violence and sexuality more and more in our films because that's what the consumer wants there. The mainstream film people are the people who have never pretended to themselves that they are anything else but businessmen. Shoba Day, former editor of the film magazine Stardust, a now best-selling author, has written a novel about a young girl getting into Bollywood. What does she have to do to get there? Well, she has to do what a lot of young girls have to do when they get to Bombay, which is... Uh, the, the traditional route to making it big, whether it's Hollywood or Bollywood, it's the casting couch, it's uh, pleasing producers, directors, uh, increasingly uh, the dawns of the underworld, and uh, compromising on every which level that uh, you can imagine. It's difficult to find firm evidence of the casting couch, although everyone in Bollywood talks about it. One girl did admit she'd compromised, but she didn't want to reveal her identity. During the time you were trying to get roles, you were seeing producers. Did any producers suggest that you should, for instance, sleep with them in order to get a role? Yeah, they did. In fact, they were like, OK, if we are giving you such a big break, what is that what we are getting in return? That's the way they start with it. And you didn't, you refused to sleep with Yes, them. I refused to. But then later on, I thought, I think so. That was a way, maybe, to get into movies. So you did agree to sleep with producers to get roles? Uh, I did for an instance, you can say. That was just once? Yeah. And then you got a role yeah. as a result of that? Right. Have you met lots of girls who have slept with uh, producers and then yes, not been yes, given roles? Yes, right. I have seen really good-looking females who are out into trying to get into movies. They, are, they were really worth it. And they spend hours and hours outside standing the, outside the offices and trying to get small, even a small role at times. Will you be willing to sleep with the producer again in order to get a part? Well, if it's a very big banner, and I feel that my career would really boost up, I think so I might. Tell me about these mamas who come with the local girls. The mamas who come with the local girls are often disappointed actresses themselves. And all their ambitions seem to be translated into now making it big uh, for their daughters. You read an awful lot about the casting couch. But do some mothers mm -hmm. suggest that their girls should sleep with people? Well, I, I know of mothers who've actually fixed up these kind of uh, appointments uh, in seedy downtown hotels or uh, with producers in their offices. Uh, frequently in the makeup rooms, uh, in studios, often in the makeup vans of um, the actors. And it seems to be a very accepted part of the business. Another temptation for strugglers is to get roles through the underworld, which finances some of the industry. 
Monica Beatty came to Mumbai from Norway. She found herself playing a role all too near the real life she'd stumbled into with a controversial producer, Mukesh Dougal. The one person who gave her a lot of um, encouragement was Mukesh Dougal. But uh, I think, I think it is slowly this news spread that she is involved with this man. And uh, people almost, I think, um, thought twice before they thought of signing her for a new film or something like that. So she became Mukesh Dugal's girl in the industry. Mukesh Dugal came to Mumbai claiming he was the son of a rich Delhi cloth merchant and started to produce films with what he said was family money. But then gradually his dealings um, and the way he was uh, pouring money into films and his um, tactics, the way of dealing with people, even with uh, the kind of stars he was working with. Uh, gradually people came to know that he was having uh, contacts with the underworld. In an interview with the magazine Cine Blitz, Monica Beatty said, I didn't know till very recently that he was linked with the underworld. Mukesh Dougal was shot at point-blank range coming out of this office building. Eyewitnesses say there were two assassins, but so far the police have not traced his killers, although the murder took place in broad daylight in the middle of a residential area. That was the end of Norwegian Monica Bedi's career. <laughs> On this location, they're shooting the film Vastav, the biography of a gangster. Vastav is intended to be a warning against becoming involved with the underworld. Director Mahesh Manjreka says that can happen all too easily to unsuccessful strugglers. Leave aside the few who succeed. What the others, others do is, now they've come to Bombay. So they, they want to try to find the easy way out. So the underworld is the easiest way out. You shoot a guy, you kill a guy, you get um, the contract money. House full at Mumbai's famous Metro Cinema. Bollywood movies are still packing in the audience in India and they've got a massive market abroad too. So long as their unique blend of music and dance, soft sex and violence sells, there'll always be would-be stars flocking to Mumbai. What advice would you give then to a young girl in the West who set out to make it in Bollywood? If you have it in you, if you have the hunger in you, if you have the thirst in you, you would make it. It's very tough. I wouldn't recommend it. And anything that I wouldn't recommend for my daughters, I wouldn't recommend to anybody else. Either. Salma Aga has made it. Angela Zaveri is still struggling. Shazia Malik has given up and come back to London. Join the Bollywood Forum at www.bbc.co.uk slash Network Asia. And next week at 7.30 here on BBC Two, East investigates forced marriages.